27 asylum seekers living on the bank of the Rio Grande for over a year crossing into the United States. They are all part of the migrant protection protocols able to enter South Texas with permission from the United States government. An immigration attorney says they hope to bring 100 more tomorrow. The waiting game can be a dangerous one. Just across the border from El Paso, Texas, is Juarez, Mexico, a city that is considered one of the most dangerous in the world. And that is where we find News Nation correspondent Brian Enton tonight with a story you'll only see on News Nation. Brian. Marnie, we are on the Texas side of the border in El Paso, which is one of the safest cities in the country. And it's so bizarre because right on the other side of the wall here is Juarez, where things are largely c controlled by the drug cartels. Mm -hmm. A busload of asylum seekers crossed the Mexico border into Brownsville, Texas Thursday. Some of the refugees from Central America have been living in shelters in Mexico for years, waiting for their chance to enter America. Amazing to see you after so long, see them suffer, for them to be here now. The migrants have been waiting in border cities like Juarez, Mexico, one of the most dangerous cities in the world that is largely controlled by cartels. With more migrants coming to areas like this recently, mm -hmm. are they in danger because of these cartels? Definitely. I mean, the, uh, the cartels own the whole trip from their countries to a city like Juarez, so they're always in danger. I mean, I guess. I guess they're in danger because they are completely on the hands of the cartel. So if the cartel wants to kill them, uh, kidnap them, rob them, uh, they, they, they can, and no one's going to do anything about that. Luis Chaparro has been a journalist covering the cartels in Juarez for over a decade. He says there are roughly eight murders a day on these streets. Do police investigate the murders? They are basically investigating only like 9% of all the murders. 9%? Yes. So less than 10%. Exactly, yeah. They are overwhelmed. I mean, imagine having um, eight murders a day and not being enough agents for a city like this one. So eight murders a day, it makes, like in 10 days, make like 80 murder cases. Luis says most of the murders are cartel related. Jose? Hi. To better understand the violence, we met up with Jose Camacho. How did you get involved with the cartel? In prison, I met some of them. Uh, and they knew what I do because in prison, I was affiliated. And they knew that, that I'm what, the way I fight. Jose says he was in the U.S. Army from 1974 until 1980. He was in prison several times on drug charges, and because he only had a green card, was deported to Mexico. Because of his affiliations in prison, he says he then began working with the cartel. Once I got here, I had to pay the favor. So um, they took me to the Sierra de Chihuahua to train some of the some other people. What kind of training did you? Small do? arms. Demolition is, is not used in Mexico, but small arms are, you know, to clear the house, to enter, to exit, so you, to you, avoid detection. You taught them how to shoot? Basically. Jose says he stopped working with the cartel several years ago. He's 64 now and has heart and lung problems and was told he doesn't have long to live. I don't want to die in Juarez. I don't want to die in Juarez. But I'd rather die in custody over there than in Juarez. We weren't expecting what happened next, but Jose said he was leaving to go to the border and turn himself in to U.S. officials. We rode with him there where he got out of the car and left, hoping that even if he's arrested, the medical treatment in prison in the U.S. will be better than in Mexico. Wow, Brian, uh, Jose's story is incredible. Did you find out tonight what happened to him? 
Well, it was interesting when he uh, got out of the car and walked up to the border wall. We sort of lost sight of him, and we weren't really sure what happened. Uh, but just a little while ago, I called one of his associates in Juarez, uh, and he said that Jose was detained for uh, about two hours, was hoping to get arrested and taken into the United States. But that did not end up happening. Uh, the border agents sent him back into Mexico, where he is right now, Marnie. Eye-opening report.